Another true crime story of how they were caught. Summer of 1987, young couple Jay Cook and his girlfriend, Tanya Van Kienberg, set out to travel from Victoria, Canada to Seattle for their dad's business. His dad had a furnace business and needed some parts and needed them to drive into the US to gather those parts. When the couple arrived in the US, they decided to stay overnight in Jay's van instead of a local hotel. Six days later, a man collecting cans on the road outside of Seattle found a body. The body was that of Tenya, and she'd been shot in the back of the head, execution style. There were also a lot of large zip ties nearby. There's also signs that a sex crime had occurred. Two days later on Thanksgiving Day, police located Jay's body. There was a rope around his neck, appeared to be strangled. There were zip ties also around the scene, and it appeared that there were cigarette butts and tissue shoved down his throat. It appeared he'd also been beaten with rocks, and police learned that this was not a spur-of-the-moment crime. It was actually premeditated based on the evidence. Soon after, they located Jay's van and another scene near a tavern where some of Tanya's personal belongings were. Police began to process the scenes, and they located a partial palm print on the back of the van. They also collected DNA from the zip ties, and they found semen stain on a clothing item inside the van. They then cut out the stain and actually froze it and preserved it since DNA really wasn't around at the time. Police looked through databases for sex offenders and could not get any leads. Both victims' families started receiving strange handwritten notes and postcards. In 2003, technology with DNA had improved and they were able to get a partial DNA profile on a stamp, but no one was in the database. Police released the handwritten notes to the public, the media, and someone recognized the handwritten samples and actually gave police a name. Oddly, police determined that this suspect was not involved and just had a mental illness. In 2018, genetic genealogy became a new tool to find suspects. Police were able to legally use a site called GenMatch to compare the DNA they had with possible distant relatives of the suspect. They also reverse engineered the process by using obituary records and public records online. This would lead police to the DNA profile of this man, William Talbot. William Talbot was a truck driver who lived about seven miles from the crime scene. He was not in police databases because he had no criminal record. Police would surveil him and get his DNA from a paper coffee cup that he left behind. Talbot's palm print matched that on the back of the van. His DNA matched the zip ties and the semen sample matched Talbot. Talbot was ultimately sentenced to two life terms without parole and that was how he was caught.